Hello again. So this is going to be your notes on the first unit of our book for oral communications. So unit one is about nature and elements of communication. This is divided into lessons. So let's start with the first part, which is understanding communication. Now, communication is the process of exchanging information. So there is an exchange of what? The information. So this information can be conveyed or stated in words, tone of voice, and body language. So body language, these are gestures, these are uh, movements of your body, parts of your body that would convey meaning. And then, second, communication originates as, a men as mental images. So these are things in your mind. Um, mental images within a person who desires to convey those images to another. So things that you have a picture of in your mind. And these are concrete forms that you're going to translate, transmit to another person in concrete form also so con concrete forms in your mind which which you are going to co to convey convey to others in using words so the words can include ideas thoughts pictures and emotions we will deal with this clearly later so what is communication in the simplest form okay you see that what is that that's the sending and receiving of messages. So you're very familiar with communication. And you do it every single day, every, almost every minute of your life. Let's continue understanding communication. So people use communication to convey their desires and needs, whether this may be trivial or significant. Trivial meaning uh, simple, basic. And then significant these are very important ones so to convey your desires and needs you share it with another then successful communication can lead to better interactions and relationships so if you are able to communicate the idea or the desires clearly then you would be able to receive what you want and what you desire for them to understand and you will have a good relationship or harmony. There will be harmony with other people. So what is the nature of communication? It is the process by which an individual or the communicator transmits stimuli or something that would ignite the other. Usually this is in the form of a verbal uh, stimuli to modify the behavior of other individuals or the audience. So. For example, you want to make friends, you send a signal, you smile, and then you say hi. That is already a stimuli and stimulus, in a singular stimulus, and you expect the one, the, the other person, the audience to respond to you. It's, it is a process by which people understand others and in turn endeavor to be understood by them. So it's really an interaction. The sending of one message, then the answer is given in another form, um, another message. It is dynamic. So when you say dynamic, it is continuous. It is uh, progressing. It is not static. It changes. So it is dynamic. It constantly change. Uh, it's constantly changing and shifting in response to the total situation. You will notice that if you say hi. To one person, the response of the, the other person, you say hi to another person, they have would be different. So they have different reactions. Some would just say hi, so the others would add more uh, words. So you would hi, smile, and maybe shake hands, or the others would just ignore you. So it depends on the response of the other person you are sending that message to and then it is all the the procedures by which one mind can 
affect another and that information is passed from one place to another. Next, what are the elements of communication? So we have these things, we have sender or the source, then we, what are we sending? We have the message, then encoding, that is getting, trying to get the meaning of what is being said. Then we have the channel, the means or the medium by which you are sending the message. Then there is the decoding or getting the meaning by the receiver. And after the receiver has understood the meaning, he or she gives the feedback. And of course, you have to re consider the context, the, the, the surrounding or the meaning behind it and the barrier so these are the things that would hinder your communication okay so let's start uh, I define them each in detail when you say source or sender that is the chief initiator of any communication so that's the first one who who says for example hi then the message is the first information that the sender wants to communicate so <clears throat> hi means you want to start a conversation okay just a simple word then encoding the process of converting the message into tangible tangible forms such as words actions or forms that the receiver understands so the basic basic uh, process that we use is language hi or we also incorporate smile and um, eye contact then the channel so the channel helps carry the message to its desired destination so in a face-to-face -face situation you use words and you face each other but in online situation like this you may use video calls text messages chat and other forms then decoding this that is the process of interpreting the encoded message sent by the source to the receiver so this is now on the part of the receiver. What does that person or what does that thing mean? So, for example, is the if the high, the expression high comes from the person you like, so the tendency is for you to answer back with a smile and acknowledge. But if that high comes from somebody who do not, whom you do not know, so the tendency is for you to ignore because you are thinking that the person might have other ulterior motives or hidden motives. Then the receiver. The receiver is the target of the message or the decoder of the message sent. So in our case, I am the first to say hi to you, my students. So you are the receiver. You are the one who are going to send back a feedback. Okay. Or in the case of saying hi to somebody, that somebody is going to to respond, and that is what we call the res the feedback have after having interpreted the message. So the interpretation process, the decoding process, could be very quick, or sometimes it could take a bit of a time before you would respond. So sometimes when you receive a text message or a message from somebody on messenger or chat and you don't know the the person sending it to you so you will have to try to analyze what is the motive what is the intention of this person why is this person trying to communicate with me okay we will get uh, give more examples later and context so this is the environment where the communication act of course so in a public place usually if somebody wants to sit beside you in a, a, a public utility vehicle in a jeepney a bus or a, a MRT or a plane then they would say excuse me is this seat taken or yeah any form of, of environment so the, the context of the message is based on the environment where it happens um, another example is when you're in a canteen you know the context would be friendly when you're in a classroom the context would be formal you are going to learn something when you are in a church that would be very formal we will uh, that's what we call frozen where you have to sit and listen only 
and so on. Next, barrier. This is any factor that inhib inhibits the conveyance of a message. That is anything that gets in the way of the message being accurately received, interpreted, and responded to. So what are the barriers? It, this could be mis uh, and this could lead to misinterpretation. Like you might be ask, uh, expecting something else if you're the receiver, but the intention of the sender is different. Or it may be some noise around you, or it may be the internet connection, and so on. Okay, we will uh, discuss that in, la uh, in detail later. Now, how we really communicate. So, ac in actual sense, this is how we communicate according to studies. So, um, 7% seven, 7 of what we communicate is based on vocabulary, so the language. That's only 7%. 38% of what we communicate is based on our voice inflections. So for the tone of the voice, if, if the voice is high, so the tendency is for you to react differently than when the tone is low. So soft, fast, they matter. And 55% 55, 55 of what we communicate is based on nonverbal behavior. So it's more on the other aspects of communication like um, the person smiles or the person is frowning so you might have different meanings for that uh, if the person is crossing his arms so crossing crossing his arms like that so that would mean rejection but if the person is looking straight to you then the person is in yeah is really interested if the person is looking somewhere else while talking to you so it would be interpreted as the person is not really interested and so on okay so the different models of communication um, let's study uh, this the first one is Shannon Weaver model where we have a direct only so there are three parts only we have the sender, then the channel, and the receiver. So, message is sent through this, and then it is received. So, <clears throat> what are the weaknesses of this method? Uh, the problems. So, the three levels of problems for this communication uh, theory is... The technical problem how accurately can the message be transmitted so we don't know then semantic problem how precisely is the meaning conveyed we also uh, that is not also very specific and last effectiveness of the problem how effectively does the received meaning affect the behavior so it's not measured okay let's move on to the next um, model so this is what we call the transax transactional model so where it means that everything is every communication pattern is a trans, uh, every communication is a transaction so you have an intention and you want that intention to be received and responded to by the receiver um, this you are familiar with transactions when you are trying to buy something so when you, you when you buy something and so you would ask for the price and then the, the other the sales lady would tell you the price and then you would want to get a deal so you might ask for a, a discount and then the sales lady would either agree or with a, give you a discount or not and then after the person has responded the sales lady has responded you would arrive at either buying the, the item or not but most often when you, you when you say transaction then it's like a business deal where you have arrived at a good a, a common benefit for both of you a symbiotic relationship okay <clears throat> so with regards to this method the um, it has this characteristics so first it recognizes that each person is a sender receiver not merely a sender or a receiver so compared to the first one which is only uh, which has only the, the uh, one flow from uh, sender 
channel receiver here you have the both the receiver and, and the sender have to interact there should be um, back and forth uh, transmission of the message then second it recognizes that communication affects all parties involved or the two so the the sender the receiver so communication is fluid or simultaneous so it's not one-sided so this is how most conversations are like the transactional mode also contains ellipses that symbolizes that symbolize the communication environment how one can interpret the data that is or are given to him then where the ellipses meet is the most um, effect communication area because both communicators are share the same message then we have the third the SRAM model um, this is where the impact of the, the message has both the desired and undesired on the target of the mes message must also be examined so the desired effect on the message uh, on the audience must also be examined so the, the message itself is given importance not only the sender and the receiver but the is the uh, you are you are going to evaluate whether the message has been received as it is intended okay so between parties the communication includes acts that confer knowledge and experiences it give it could give advice and commands it could ask questions and these acts may take many forms in one of the various manners of communication so the form depends on the abilities of the group communicating and then together the communication content and form make messages that are sent towards a destination and the target can be oneself another person and as be or another being as entity so there is a combined understanding of what is intended physical noise can also inhibit communication and it is not a, uh, it hinders the process in which the sender intends it for the reader to receive and the receiver will not be able to decode the message clearly psychological noise so it alludes to mechanisms within individuals that restrict a sender's or receiver's ability to express and or understand messages clearly examples of which are uh, centers with limited vocabularies may have difficulty translating images into symbols that can be understood easily by receivers so that is language uh, restriction and another is receivers with inflated self-concepts may filter messages that disagree with their self perceptions and put energy into defending themselves rather than into understanding the messages so the first one is more on language so you will notice that even if you share the same common dialect sometimes you still mis misunderstand each other so the way you say a word may have a different impact on the other person so for example I, I give this as a common example the word buang so buang you, is crazy but when you talk with your friends you would just it is something that is harmless like an expression but when you say it to other people who don't belong to your group of friends they may they might consider it as something that is an attack on them so or even within groups of individuals in a class so some person might uh, understand it differently 
and other people may take it differently also. And the second one is inflated self-concept. So you will notice that some people are very defensive. So you just say something and they get uh, angry or they react differently from what you intend. So because these people have are might be going through something, the word that you may have said, like buang, would have a different impact on them and it, it may trigger in them uh, an experience, usually a traumatic experience or a negative experience that would make them make them defensive. And uh, yeah, simple expressions could mean differently depending on what is inside the person. So these are psychological things. They, these are already uh, built in in every sender and receiver. So we have to be aware of this. And psychological noise most often results in defensiveness that hinder the flow of communication between sender and receiver. Okay, let's go to the next, which is the common barriers to effective communication. So we have the use of jargon, overcomplicated, unfamiliar, and or technical terms. Sometimes this happens in the class. You would, you might not understand what the word that your teacher is using, but actually it is something that you already know. It's the way the, the, the word is maybe pronounced or used that you might um, not be able to get what the, the person, the teacher is saying. Another is emotional barriers and taboos. So some people may find it difficult to express their emotions and some topics may be completely off limits or taboo. So yeah, um, there are some people who don't want to talk about their age. Some people don't want to talk about their sexual preferences. So these are things that may be considered as a barrier to communication. So we have to be sensitive. Then lack of attention, interest, distractions, or irrelevance to the receiver. Okay, lack of attention. You're already sleepy, so you cannot understand what the other person is saying, uh, the teacher is saying in the class. Uh, you, the, the idea is it not interesting. Of course, many times, uh, especially in classes, you just attend classes because they are required. And not all subjects are interesting to you. So, yeah, that is another form of uh, barrier. Distraction, so loud noise again, yeah, or your feelings, your your feeling sick, so it is a distraction. Irrelevance of the receiver, so if the idea is not important to you, so the tendency is you don't listen or you don't respond uh, correctly. Then differences in perception and viewpoint, okay. So it's difficult to talk to a small child about calculus because the child has an idea that math is just a simple addition, subtraction, division, and multiplication. Okay, and it would also be difficult to talk about perception when you're talking to a senior citizen and you're talking about your experiences with online classes. Okay, because uh, mostly the senior citizens haven't experienced, maybe uh, just a few of them were able to experience online classes when they were younger or in their um, past employment. Then another barrier could be physical disabilities such as hearing problems or speech difficulties. Yeah, sometimes we mispronounce words because of our dentures, our braces, or maybe you have some sores inside your mouth so you cannot or in your tongue, so you cannot, uh, you have difficulty saying them. So these are also some temporary disabilities or hearing problems that uh, some people, the older people, could have hearing problems already. Okay. Other common barriers to effective communication: physical barriers to nonverbal communication. So not being able to see. The nonverbal cues, gestures, posture, and general body language can make the communication less effective. So this is usually when you are not looking at the person you are talking to. <clears throat> so the tendency is you cannot see everything. You cannot understand everything. 
and much more in our case the physical barrier is the 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 physical distance so we cannot be with each other inside the room so that makes it difficult language differences and the difficulty in understanding unfamiliar accents okay language differences so even in hiligay non or no in karay kinaraya if you are from antique and you are going to talk with somebody from santa barbara you have a different kinaraya so there is still a difficulty in understanding the the, the words how much more if you belong to different dialects or different languages so for example for me i know cebuano better than hiligaynon so i could understand some of the words in hiligaynon uh, th that is also because i stayed here in when i was in college uh, for one year so at least i have a vocabulary strong vocabulary of hiligaynon but it's still in the way I say the word may be different so you may not understand my intention so uh, some students may not also be able to understand my accent especially if the the students are are used to this to the malambing the soft-spoken uh, hiligaynon and here I come with my accent which is uh, not malambing so there might be misinterpretation misunderstanding and of, okay of course the most popular ones are the accent that even if we know english but we face different english na native english speakers so if you face a person from america then at least you understand a bit or you are more familiar with the american accent but if you are faced with a person from from England so the accent is also different much more if you you are faced with a person from Australia the accent is really very different so even if you are speaking in English you may have difficulty in understanding each other and yeah I remember also Hong Kong and Singaporean accent of English they are speaking in English but if you don't if you close your eyes and you don't look at them without the gestures and the and the expressions you might think they are still speaking in uh, Chinese next uh, expectations and prejudices which may lead to false assumptions or stereotyping so people often hear what they expect to hear rather than what is actually said and jump to incorrect conclusions so yeah we have to avoid this especially in our classes because some people tend to assume that you understand so some teachers may be sticking to what they have been used to teaching and then here come students who come from different backgrounds and they have already their preconceived idea of what a teacher should be and lo and behold the teacher is different so you may react negatively against the teacher so um and also here for common ex uh, examples is uh, here's a friend who comes to your house a boy a, ma a male and then you have a crush on that male person so you expect you're a girl you expect that that person is going to court you but so you are whatever he says you are giving meaning to those words but actually the person is just there to borrow something or borrow your notes so these are certain examples that but that the uh, leads to miscommunication okay cultural differences yes we were we will deal with this more later about culture so the norms of social interaction vary greatly in different cultures as to the way in which emotions are expressed so uh, in certain cultures it's okay to say hi and in initiate a conversation between strangers but in other cultures you have to be to be careful with whom you are talking to or else you might you might be deceived like budul budul gang are you familiar with that so you might be trapped into something so culture would refer to different way uh terms not only uh your your ethnic origin so culture could be family culture societal culture and so on 
and okay the example of personal space varies in between uh, countries and different social settings so you will notice that uh, in the Philippines now during the because of the pandemic we are very conscious about space or distance but in other countries like in the US they have already been um, um, practicing social dis distancing so you are not supposed to be close to another person within uh, less than one meter that is a common uh, experience already when you are queuing when you are uh, in a line so you're not supposed to stick to, to to be touching another person's body or things now in the Philippines we are so close we don't care whether we are touching uh, by a person behind us or in front of us when we are queuing especially when we are in a hurry right so this vary also okay how to achieve effective communication so we have the seven C's of effective communication I hope you can master this and you, you will put this to heart one is completeness so you convey all facts required by the audience sometimes um, this is really violated by the TV news reports and fake news so they only put a portion of what is said and that makes it trending and negative next com conciseness so conciseness means brevity so be direct to the point avoid a lot of words so beating around the bush will make your communication process more confusing then consideration consideration implies stepping into the shoes of others or trying to to think about how the person is going to receive the message how will the person feel when he or she receives the message then clarity so it implies emphasizing on specific message or goal at a time rather than trying to achieve too much at once so make sure that you, the idea is clearly stated and you just don't dump in everything to the other person so, for example in giving instructions in giving directions turn left turn right turn left turn right so you have to be specific you will say after 200 meters you turn left towards the the 7-eleven convenience store you move walk walk a little bit um, for about 100 meters then on your right would be a house that is colored white that is not our house just continue on walking after so you have to be specific when you're giving directions okay next and clear concreteness so concrete communication implies being particular and clear rather than fuzzy and general concreteness strengthens the confidence of the speaker of the person so concreteness is you have again to be specific you don't beat around the bush you have to sh to to make it very clear like um, a concrete form of something abstract for example um, love so the symbol of love is a flower or a rose for for example red rose you have to make it very clear that what you're conveying is you you want to show love to the person by showing a concrete evidence so that's what we I mean with concrete make it very clear that the intention of this message is for you to submit your assignment on time or the intention of this message you say hi to your uh, group mate because you want to tell the group mate to remind your group mate that the deadline is approaching and you, that group mate should do his or her assigned task and so on next uh, courtesy so we have we have to remember being polite so we have completeness one two three four five six that is six um, courtesy in message implies the message should show the sender's expression as well as it should respect the receiver so 
in face-to-face situations you have to smile you have to say good morning you have to say thank you being able to really appreciate the other person's time and uh, in of course online classes I don't know if I have already uploaded the netiquette in, in one of the modules so there are a lot of things that we have to remember uh, avoiding all caps not um, if you want to be friendly with another person when with even with your friend you have to uh, to send even emoticons to say to show that you are joking to show that the, the issue is not is friendly and so on so there are ways of showing courtesy then correctness so correctness in communication implies that there are no grammatical errors in the communication so this is especially when you are sending emails or letters make sure also with uh, remember the context so to whom are you sending it you are not supposed to be sending wrong grammar wrong punctuation wrong incomplete sentences when you are sending a message and of course that that makes it clear also that makes the the, the message clear complete and concrete so please remember these seven C's of communication now let's go to culture so this is what I, I've been saying a while ago intercultural communication when you say intercultural so they belong you are talking to people with different cultures but you should remember we should remember that a classroom communication is already intercultural so we don't belong to different uh, nations or nationalities but we belong to different families with different norms different practices and beliefs uh, based on your uh, location so that already affects your culture okay so intercultural communication is the sharing of information on different levels of awareness and control levels of awareness and control between people with different cultural backgrounds where different cultural backgrounds include both national cultural differences and these differences which rel relate to participation in different activities that exist within a national union so that is quite vague that is quite uh, big but um, when you say intercultural communication you are sharing the information with people who do not have the same exact beliefs and perceptions as you do okay you are you have different experiences and the one communicating or the one sending the message and the one receiving it so we call that control who is controlling the communication and then we people with different cultural backgrounds national cultural differences so this is more uh, on really literal intercultural uh, setting already this one where different cultural backgrounds include both national cultural differences so in the Philippines we have different regions so that's also that also affects our uh, national cultural differences and national youth participation in different activities so in uh, okay let's deal with this in detail culture and communication so culture is often considered the core concept in intercultural communication culture refers to your beliefs your your experiences your norms your customs so intercultural communication often focus on how cultural groups differ from one another examples the difference between Muslims and Christians so uh, Christians or the, the ones who acknowledge Jesus as their um, 
spiritual leader worship differently than the Muslims. The Muslims would have to remove their their uh, footwear, and then the men and the women are are to be separated, and they they kneel and kiss the the, the floor. For Christians in general. They just go to church and they sit in the pews in certain chairs. They listen to the sermon, and they don't. They wear their shoes inside the the, the church, the the building. And differences between Japanese and the the U.S. The difference between women and men. The difference between environmentalists and conserv conservationist conservationist the pro lifers and the pro choicers the old and the young and so on so this is each of the the groups have differences and being different doesn't mean it is wrong okay so let's we don't have any uh, right to judge others and say that that's the wrong way that's wrong or that that's not right because our cultural practices or the way the and our cultural beliefs are right in our respective cultures so i hope i could um focus on this more but it is not Part of the discussion in this manner I usually discuss it in my intercultural communication class so maybe in the future I would be able to inject more information here okay so the relationship between culture and communication is complex for the following reasons culture influences communication and is enacted and reinforced to communication so our culture really affects the way we communicate with others when I was younger, my parents would not allow me to, when I was very small, uh, we, we, we would be told by our parents to get inside the bedroom when there, we have visitors because we are not supposed to hear what they are talking about. But now that I am a parent, I allow my kids to be part of the conversation so that they would be aware of the things, the intentions of why a relative or a visitor is uh, comes to our house so that may differ also so my my the culture before and the culture at present could be different and communication also may may be a way of contesting and resisting the dominant culture so uh, we will we notice that there are person who always are against the existing government so that is one way of communicating so the culture of these people who are who are always complaining that is also resisting the dominant culture so when i was watching the the tv news it seems like it is a summary of complaints like it's no longer a it's no longer news it's no longer something current events but it's opinions of a lot of people complaining about the beep card complaining about the, the social distancing complaining about a lot of things so yeah we see a lot of this resisting and contesting the dominant culture these days then the context also influences communication it is the physical so context we have already discussed that in uh, Unit 3. Uh, it influences communication. It is the physical and social setting in which communication occurs or the larger political, social, and historical environment. So we can always look at the situation where the communication happens. If it's in uh, in the Congress, then they are uh, they always have to do some debates or um, uh, privileges, privileged speeches, uh, explaining his uh, each of the Congress men's um, ideas about a certain topic and so on. Next, power. Power is pervasive, so it plays an enormous 
although of a hidden role in the intercultural communication. So power to whom the authority belongs usually. So in a government setting, so the power is on the leader, on the president or the barangay captain. In the class, it would be the authority on the teacher and then the authority of the leader, your group leaders, your president. In small cases, sometimes it's affected by the economic background of the individual. So in a society, so the rich has more power than the poor and so on. Now, what about identity and communication? So what is this? This is your fingerprint. So identity has a profound influence on inter intercultural communication processes. How does it influence? So in intercultural communication interactions, we have the mistaken identities, which are often heightened or exacerbated and can create communication problems. Uh, when people assume about the knowledge of an, another person's identity, so the way a person speaks, ah, ito, taga, ano to, taga, probinsya. So, the tendency for the city people is to, to think that they don't know anything. Or, ano pa ba? And the person looks rugged and, and dirty. So you, the, the people who are Especially, yeah, this happens, especially in the department stores. Um, some sales ladies would not, would ignore the people who look poor and dirty. They judge right away. So you will, you might have seen this in many of the uh, video clips and movies that, that you watch. And uh, identity also based on their membership in a particular cultural group. So in the Philippines, you would say if you be, if you are an Ilocano, you are Koripot. So, but that is a regional thing that is not true. Uh, a regional name that is not really true. Or uh, if it's a Cebuano. Mga, ano da, mga deceiver, but that's not also true. So it's, in the Philippines, it is, this is very common. We, we put some meaning or some ident false identity on people. Um, in Manila, people who speak in the Visayan dialect are often looked down because people there speak Tagalog, but actually, uh, they they thought they are higher but actually it's not also true so we expect this is very common in our country so when people do this they are ignoring the individual aspect and the labels so labels that refer to particular identities are an important part of intercultural communication these labels do not of course ex of course exist outside of their relational meanings so in your classes, uh, sometimes at the beginning of the semester, if the teacher is giving a lot of, of requirements, you would say, ah, this teacher is so-and-so. If the teacher does not give requirements, you would say, ah, this teacher is lazy. And you tend to complain. So we have the tendency to judge. In So I, you are familiar with that, with this uh, labeling of people. Next, um, the question here is one of identity. So, who am I perceived to be when I communicate with others? So, you ask yourself, how will that person respond to me? How does that person look at me? So, you might be asking yourself, how does my teacher look at me? Uh, of course, we look at you as students. So, we have... We have to understand who the person is based on what you know about the general knowledge about the individual. So for me as a teacher, I would look at students as students. So they are senior high school students. They are between 15 to 18 years old. They are adolescents. They undergo a certain um, aspect of their lives where they are, they have identity issues. They they want to prove themselves to be mature. Others are 
hesitant to be mature um, they tend to be defensive because they want independence so I have to consider all this when I am dealing with senior high school high school students but when I deal with college students that would be different and especially when I deal with graduate students so I when I uh, I also teach graduate school so when I deal with uh, teachers most of them are teachers and professionals so when they come to my class I expect that they are already responsible so they go there they pay their own tuition they have they work hard so they have to work hard also in in the class they have to also be able to uh, excellently do their papers and sometimes I have to consider also the deadlines for these people because they are busy they have work so I could extend the deadline for them but for you well, you are a full-time student so I we would set uh, practical and rela uh, realistic deadlines for you to finish your your courses your subjects okay so identity is very much um tied to the ways in which people speak to each other and the ways in which society represents people's interests so think about the assumptions one might make about others based on their physical appearance i mentioned that a while ago are dirty or not fashionable some people would think they are poor or they are ignorant or whatever so what do people know about others if they know only that they are from the South Africa or Australia or Pakistan? Africa, so people who are uh, dark-skinned, what would that, what would, uh, what impact would that have on you? If it's a person who is white, so uh, the, uh, when we were younger, we thought that everyone who is white is Americano. But when we grow up, we realize that Americano is not, is only the Americans are only one uh, nationality. There are others who are white skin. On Pakistan, so sometimes when we look at people who look like Pakistani or Arabic, there is a tendency for us to associate them with other things and events. So it would be easier to think about the times that people have made erroneous assumptions about individuals based on limited information assumptions that one can be become aware of in the process of communication so in other words we are not supposed to judge a book by its cover right we do not judge people by their looks then focusing solely on someone's nationality place of origin gender religion and the like can lead to mistaken conclusions about the person's identity okay social and cultural identities so we are about to be ending this uh, unit uh, gender identity so gender would be male and female what about sexual identity so sexual identity we have these preferences already that that is existing in our society so we have the lgbtq plus plus and um, these are also things that affect the way people communicate with each other. Next, age identity. So young, old, children. So when you're talking to older people, you have the tendency to just listen or you are expected to listen. So I hope you have watched the Paghuna Huna, the, the webinar that was given to you by mental, uh, on mental health. Uh, I remember one of the speakers say said that young people are supposed to listen to the adults because of the parents particularly because parents would always parents when they were younger always listen to their parents also and so on and one thing I remember about the lecture is there is really no difference between the teenagers or the adolescents before and now. The, the psychological, uh, physical, and emotional experiences are the same, except that they are, uh, the difference is the time and the, the technology and the exposure, so the environment. So before, during my time, 
there were no cell phones there were no we write on paper and we submit using the typewriter so now you can do everything it's so easy already you can do screenshots of your notes take photos of the lectures and you can bring them anywhere but there are a lot of distractions now than before okay so let's look at the bracket of the generations this was mentioned so uh, you are now you are you belong to generation generation z so those who were born in 1997 whose age in 2007 17 is 20 and younger okay so this is taken from 2017 um illustration so the millennial were born from 1981 to 1997 so the they are the working class now and generation x so that would be your parents me your teachers or some of your teachers are still in the millennial generation and we have the baby boomers so the baby boomers are the your grandparents the silent generation these are the, your great grandparents so my my mother belonged to this and my father belonged to the greatest generation because i belong to the old fam an old family my brothers and sisters older than me belong to the baby boom generation okay so we may differ in the time and environment but we experience the same social biological cultural psychological uh, experiences at a certain time in our lives okay then social and cultural identities religious identity so we have the christian the muslims there the buddhist you are familiar with that class identity i want to make this uh, an example so for the class identity i'm sorry it is covered so the class identity we have the rich the poor a uh, rich the upper class the middle class and the lower class sometimes they hin uh, that hinders our communication relationship with other people so those who are living in high-end subdivisions with lots of cars compared to those who are commuters they may have differences also in the way they communicate with each other so it's very clear in in the urban uh, in the city in metro manila for example in other countries like nepal that is still very much practiced and the problem is once you are born in the lower class you will not be able to rise up to the higher class if even if you enter even if you uh, achieve a high degree so i have this i had the students in the uh, international teachers college in indonesia so his mother was a uh, La Bandera, but he was able to finish teacher's education in international school but when he goes back to Nepal he would still be considered as lower class so they would not be allowed to intermarry with the higher class people so it's it's quite sad and that is still real a real experience by some people in the world so finally about your identity i want you to remember so this is a picture of your dna uh, let us not be affected by how people look at us but let us be aware of how god looks at us so we can say this together thank you for making me so wonderfully complex your workmanship is marvelous how well i know it you watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark womb. 
So there is someone in heaven who knows us and loves us so much. So that is already a very solid foundation that we don't have to look down on ourselves and think that we are inferior. So that's all for this lecture and you may ask me questions after you have watched this lecture. God bless you.